Welcome back, everyone. Today I have with me George Bruno. He's a content producer and a coach, and he's the man that can help you get unstuck. George is also a speaker at 22 conventions. That's the convention that has the tagline, Make Women Great Again. And I had him, have him coming here today to have a chance to talk about what he's going to be speaking about and what kind of value women will get out of it. Welcome, George. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So a lot of women have been asking specifically about the speakers at 22 Convention and what they're going to be talking about. So perhaps you could let us know a little bit about what your speech is going to be about. Yeah. Uh, well, it sounds more triggering than it really is, but the topic is going to be how to be the ideal wife, which in and of itself, people would say, well, what do I know about being an ideal wife? I know a lot about how to be married to an ideal wife, and I know one when I see one. What does an ideal wife look like? What does it mean to be the ideal wife? Does it mean waiting for your man wrapped in saran wrap when he comes home and meets you know and you meet him at the front door? Does it mean you're on your back with your legs up all the time? Does it mean you're constantly fetching his slippers and waiting on him? Many people will would that's the first thing that comes to their mind. That's it's the exact opposite of what I see. When a woman is with a man who is a leader, takes his role as a man seriously, she gladly becomes the ideal wife. The ideal wife is a reaction to a man's love. Talking about hypergamy, I'm talking about the net roles. When men step up to the plate as a husband, protect and provide, Eve is their God-given role, a woman responds in an way. That's one of the reasons why I, when I coach people and mentor people, uh, date long and marry slow. Now, I know there's a lot of people who, including yourself, who met and you kind of knew one right away. It's not to discount uh, that your situation is rare and it's honorable and uh, definitely something that I, th I would love to have everyone have that in their life. But you have to admit it's rare. You have mm -hmm. to admit Absolutely. It. Well, and, yeah. and you have to see, too, I'm an outlier. Um, I spent my entire life training to be very right. skilled at understanding people very quickly. And so I could understand who the woman that I was interested in was very rapidly. I knew what questions to ask. Um, I was very well trained in that. Unfortunately, most men, they don't know what questions to ask. They don't know what things to look out for. And it's really difficult for them. Right. Right. Yeah. I. Uh, so obviously... You have done what I would call like speed vetting. <laughs> You're in a speed dating, there's speed vetting. And uh, congratulations, because uh, you've been very successful on that. I like, I like taking advice from people who've been there and done that and have something to talk about. You are one of those people. Like I said, I think it's very honorable, and it's a good example for a lot of people. I do believe that. I also believe that women respond to a man who is steady and sure, not wavering, not trendy, a man who is a rock. I tell women all the time, uh, look for a rock. Look for a man who's strong and immovable. I tell men, be the rock in your relationship. She doesn't want to be the rock. If you are weak and she steps up to the plate to become the strong one, to become the main earner, then what's happening is you're going to create resentment in her because the masculine role is for provider and protector. When you put her in that role, she may do it, but she's not doing it willingly or she's not doing it willingly for long. And it will fracture her view of you. You'll start to be seen as one of the children rather than as the man. 100%. You're correct on that. That's why I say 
Men, be the rock. Don't make her be the rock. She's looking for a rock. She doesn't want to be the rock herself. Yes, absolutely. No, that's absolutely right. And what what is the, for, for women themselves, um, from the uh, speech that you're going to give, what kinds of takeaways, what kinds of specific things are they going to be able to take away from this that they can apply in their own life without necessarily giving away the, the whole meat of the speech, um, the, the type of problems that they'll be able to solve after they listen to your speech? I want them to, to be on the lookout and be able to identify the things that are important. Handsome is nice. It's an accessory, but it's not important. It's the a handsome man does not mean uh, he has what it takes to stay married for a lifetime. So there needs to be virtues that she's looking for. So all of that being said, how to vet a man, what things to look for in a man, what things to avoid. Excellent. That's, I think that's very important because to a large extent, women, even more so than men, have been pushed on them this narrative of if you have any kind of a standard, you are judging people. And, it's, and judging people makes, means that you are judgmental and that is somehow a negative. Whereas the reality is people who are better at judging and perceiving and sensing the world around them and the kind of people they are having relationships with are generally a lot more successful than people who lack in the ability to judge. And we've, we've had that ability eroded in women. And also, you know, nowadays women don't generally have that strong family structure, strong church structure, strong social structure that they used to have to help them in making those decisions. It, you know, uh, it's very easy for us to get our head turned around when we're dating and yeah. having those other people in our life, setting up that structure really makes it a lot easier for us to make good decisions because we have, we have other people to help catch us and help sharpen our, our ability to discern and to judge and to protect us really. Yes. Yeah. So for a lot of women, if you don't if you don't have a, a strong male presence in your life to ask these questions to, uh, this is a great place to go. Come to 22 Convention. There are men like George Bruno that you can ask questions of in between the sessions. We're going to have the, the wonderful speeches as well. And getting married is a huge risk if you proceed blindly into it. If you proceed carefully into it and you have the right knowledge beforehand, it is very, very worthwhile and the risk diminishes tremendously. Uh, it's a matter, matter not just of managing risk, but of reducing it. And there are things that people can do to increase their chance of not just staying married, but being happily married. And that's a lot of what we're going to be talking about at 22 Convention is how women can have happy, healthy, stable, long term marriages, long-term relationships with the men in their life. And this is really information that's not available in other places. That is true. That is true. Uh, there's very little talk in the manosphere or men's community about two becoming one. And I strongly believe that that's what marriage is. I didn't say that. That didn't originate with me. The two shall become one flesh. I didn't make that up. And the author of that statement, I'm not going to question. So I believe that that is the proper way to look at things. It's not two fully functioning individuals and one person being subservient to the other. There's a third entity that's created. There's her, there's you, and then there's a we. But that doesn't mean you lose your individual identity. Yes, absolutely. And I, I like to think of it, too, that it, you know, a, a well-matched couple are more than the sum of their parts. Uh, you don't, Correct. you know, there's give and take in a relationship. And, you know, I've had people say, well, you know, if I have to give and I get a reciprocal the same amount back, why bother take the risk? Well, that's not what happens, though. 
you both give something and you get both get back far more than you give. Right. You know, you'll, you'll have much more than you had before. It's that uh, some of its parts. And that's not even counting, of course, children and family and the, the legacy that a healthy marriage leaves behind. So right. it's, it's really something that there is no. And, and I think a lot of the men in the manosphere who are anti-marriage, um, I, I, I completely agree with the men who say, be careful, be cautious. That makes sense. But the men who are anti-woman, anti-marriage uh, at any, you know, th there's never a good time to get married. I think that to a large extent, because they have been either through their own decisions or just, you know, lack of knowledge, they've been denied the opportunity to have a healthy marriage. They're speaking from a place of resentment. They, it's the same with a lot of feminists. Um, they'll talk about, you know, they don't need no man. Well, really, they desperately want a man. They just aren't going to get one. So they have to convince themselves they don't need a man in order to feel uh, to feel like life is worth continuing. Uh, and so I think this is really a sad situation for people. And it is it is a situation that can be resolved largely through knowledge and then making a series of good decisions. It's the application of the knowledge. I agree with that. Yes. Excellent. Very good. Why? I'm curious why you specifically, George, are someone that is qualified to give this kind of a speech. Well, I was a therapist for 22 years. That's what I did for a living, full time and part time. I also have a trade that I've always had. I came from a family that said, always have a trade, have something you can do with your hands. So I worked in the healthcare and education world for over two decades as a psychotherapist. Worked with a lot of people during those years, listening to a lot of problems, helping people solve a lot of issues. I have a master's plus a thousand continuing ed hours post masters in addition to all of that. I come from a Christian background, although this is not a Christian conference, that's the perspective that I come from, and I can't fake that I'm not that, because that's part of my core values and who I am. I also went to a Christian college and got a degree in pastoral studies, and I went to seminary as well as university. So I was uh, viewing things from a Christian point of view. The rubber hit the road when I got divorced. And I had to make sense of everything, my faith, my identity as a man. I had to redefine my family. And that was 16 years ago. And now as I have worked in my trade for many, many years, and I moved back into mentoring and coaching, there is less fragility. I was a very strong man. and then. I got divorced and I saw cracks in the vase. I saw cracks in my structure. It's almost like a building inspector going into a building and saying, this foundation is flawed. The building's going to come down eventually. And that's exactly what happened. I was an expert on marriage until I got married. I was an expert at parenting until I had kids. And I'm well studied. I read more than any human being that I know. And still, I fell flat on my face. Well, it's been now almost two decades since that happened. And I've added to the structure that I initially built, I had to clear away the clutter. And now I view, view marriage and relationships through a lens of retrospect in my own life. It's not theory anymore. It's actual experience. and now have a great track record of successful clientele, men, tees, followers on my YouTube channel. Uh, right now there's, last time I checked, it's about 140,000 and about 15,000 of those are women. So it's a, a minority of women, 
but I do communicate with women on a regular basis who reach out to me for coaching. Many, for many of them, let me put it this way. When I had darker hair, I was the father they never had. Now, with the gray hair and beard, I am the grandfather that they never had. And I'm happy to play that role. Excellent. And that's, that's one of the most important things, I think, for a young woman who is seeking to get married is to have an older male mentor that she can go to to help vet um, the men that she's interested in. Uh, women have been culturally acclimated out of their ability to be good at judging men. And it takes an older man who's got experience, who's dealt with other men, who's heard how men talk when women aren't looking, to understand the signs that the man is giving off. Um, for example, I've, I've often seen women misunderstanding signs of masculine dominance for abusiveness and then signs of the nice guy syndrome for being a good man and it's difficult for them to understand that but we've looked behind behind the screen and so you understand how to give that kind of advice yeah, yeah. excellent excellent well thank you very much george uh, it's been excellent having you on today and i'm going to um uh, share this information with people on my YouTube channel. And I think it's also going to be on the 21 Conventions YouTube channel as well. But where can people find out more about you? I'm on Twitter at George Bruno. I am on Instagram at George A. Bruno and on YouTube as George Bruno. Excellent, excellent. So people can look there. I think you also have a website where they can sign up for your newsletter. And I encourage people, people can sign up for. Yep. I, I encourage people to follow George. Um, your your morning ritual with coffee and stirring it, and the the calm demeanor that you have is an excellent way. If you're feeling some anxiety, watch some of George Bruno's uh, videos. It will help even you out. You're going to feel excellent and you'll be able to go about your day with uh, a little less anxiety thank you very much george it's been excellent thank you noah have a great day thank you